Welcome to this service of Holy Communion from the Book of Common Prayer at Hampstead Parish Church. Today in the Book of Common Prayer is the Sunday next before Advent in the Common Worship Lectionary and Calendar, Christ the King. And our collect is to stir up, stir up the wills and minds of God's faithful people. I pray today that uh, as we gather uh, across our community, across our nation, indeed across our world, that we will be gathered together and stirred up to do the will and the works of God and reveal the love of God in these complex times. The orders of service for our services through the day can be found on the church website. Uh, there's a bar, a bar down the left-hand side and orders of service there. Uh, click on that and you'll be able to then download uh, the, this order and the orders for our services to follow too. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment, and the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write all these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. Almighty God, whose kingdom is everlasting and power infinite, have mercy upon the whole church, and so rule the heart of thy chosen servant Elizabeth, our queen and governor, that she, knowing whose minister she is, may above all things seek thy honour and glory, and that we and all her subjects duly considering whose authority she has, may faithfully serve, honour, and humbly obey her, in thee and for thee, according to thy blessed word and ordinance, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with thee and the Holy Ghost liveth and reigneth ever one God, world without end. Amen. Stir up, we beseech thee, O Lord, the wills of thy faithful people, that they, plenteously bringing forth the fruit of good works, may of thee be plenteously rewarded through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The portion of scripture appointed for the epistle is written in the 23rd chapter of the prophecy of Jeremiah, beginning at the 5th verse. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. In his days Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely, and this is his name whereby he shall be called, the Lord our righteousness. Therefore, behold... The days come, saith the Lord, that they shall no more say, The Lord liveth which brought up the children out of, of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But the Lord liveth which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country, and from all countries whither I had driven them, and they shall dwell in their own land. Here endeth the portion of scripture appointed for the epistle. <clears throat> The Holy Gospel is written in the sixth chapter of the Gospel according to St. John. 
beginning at the fifth verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. When Jesus then lift up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he saith unto Philip, Whence shall we buy bread that these may eat? This he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them that every one of them may take a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, saith unto him, There's a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes, but what are they among so many? And Jesus said, Make the men sit down. Now, there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down in number about five thousand. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples, and the disciples to them that were set down, and likewise of the fishes, as much as they would. When they were filled, he said unto his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Therefore they gathered them together and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves, which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. Then those men, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did, said, This is, of a truth, that prophet that should come into the world. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I speak in the name of God, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. The readings for the Sunday next before Advent, the 25th Sunday after Trinity in the Book of Common Prayer, point us to the reign, the rule, the overarching governance of God in Jesus Christ our Lord. The prophecy of Jeremiah points to the one who from the house of David will rule and draw not just the people of Israel, but the whole world to himself. In John chapter 6, this central miracle, if you like, in John's gospel, the feeding of the 5,000, points to the ways in which Jesus will gather together not just the tribes of Israel, but all the fragments that are left over, the whole world. And in feeding all who were there, God will give good life, everything, to those who are gathered, those who trust in him. In more recent years, this Sunday uh, before Advent has been called Christ the King. 
pointing firmly to the belief, the faith, the firm assurance of hope that Christ is King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Just before this service started and at the end of this service, I'll pan uh, the camera up to the window which is above me now, which speaks of Christ in glory, holding the orb, the physical sign of reign and rule. It's a feature of the Book of Common Prayer that there's a collect before the collect of the Sunday which prays for the sovereign of this nation, Her Majesty the Queen. There are churches I've ministered in where the prayer book has clearly gone back to previous centuries uh, and Victoria has been crossed out to be replaced by Edward and then George uh, and so on. It's uh, a reminder <clears throat> that the reign of God is over all whether our earthly rulers come or go. The prayer is that those in authority, uh, Her Majesty the Queen and those in authority under her, will know where their authority comes from. The prayer is that the monarch will know and seek the honour and glory of God and that we as subjects of authority, trusting that their authority is the authority of God, will serve, honour and obey, do our citizenly duty. We can do that when we trust and pray that those in authority bear the authority of Christ, Christ the King, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. The depictions of Christ in majesty, Christ the King of Kings, should, should depict Christ still with the wounds of the crucifixion. It's always a good test to see whether that image of Christ in glory is the Lamb who was slain and above our image of Christ here above my head is the further image of the Lamb, the one slain so that we might live. Earthly authority can only be born and exercised when it is in sacrificial service. When power is exercised to subdue, to subjugate, to oppress, to draw from the subject's power only for the person wielding the authority, that's a perversion of authority. Today, this Sunday, reminds us that Christ the King is the King who bears the wounds of love. Christ the King is the one who washed feet. Christ the King is the one who gives to all. Christ the King is the one who serves, who calls us friends. We worship Christ as Lord. We are in this amazing relationship. We're welcomed into the fellowship of God as friends. We recognize the overarching authority and majesty and glory of God. This is an intimate awe. The privilege of Christian discipleship is welcome and worship. It is for the Christian disciple to remember that as we are welcomed as friends of Christ, we are welcomed in because of the gift of love supremely given in Christ for us. And we do not take that lightly. We come with awe and worship welcomed in. May we offer that authority, that love, that kingship and that service. 
as we seek and serve Christ in each of the faces we meet, in all of the people with whom we have to do, and across the world in those whom we serve. May our rulers bear that authority, the authority of the Lamb who was slain. And on this Sunday of Christ the King, may we be stirred up to do the will and the works of God in the service of Christ, the one who serves. Amen. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church, militant here in earth. In our prayers for the life of this parish, we pray for all involved in our work among children and young people, particularly in our 28 days of prayer, praying for Maureen and all our volunteers. Pray for the service at 9.30, focusing particularly on children uh, and the adults with whom they are bubbled, their families and households. Among our local churches, we pray for our neighbours at St Andrew's Frognall. And among the charities and mission agencies we support, we pray today for the Children's Society. Praying especially for this season in which many churches will celebrate Christingle, which the Children's Society have adopted as a focus for their worship and their mission and fundraising. In the Anglican Communion, we pray for the Anglican Church of Bermuda. And in this diocese in the Wilsdon area, praying for all retired clergy and the Curcio movement in the diocese. We continue our prayers for all who in this community are working on the front line of the pandemic, for the NHS, for our local council, for the government, for all involved in testing and tracing, that we may be preserved and that those who are ill may be treated, come to healing. Among those for whom we have been praying who are ill, we pray for Iris, Ron, Dayton and Bill. We pray for those who have invited our prayers through the request a prayer site, uh, section of the website. We join in with the prayers of those who have come in the week and lit candles here. We pray for those who, if the regulations permit, uh, are planning to be married here, for Lily and Malcolm and the plans for their wedding in December. 
We remember those who have died. We pray for John Cecil Williams. And in our year's mind, for Effie Hunter, Joan de Bunsen, Peter Dorling, Lynn Cook, John Weston Smith, and Nene Archibong. Almighty and ever living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity and concord. And grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to save and defend all Christian kings, princes and governors, and especially thy servant Elizabeth, our queen, that under her we may be godly and quietly governed, and grant unto her whole counsel and to all that are put in authority under her, that they may truly and indifferently minister justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and curates, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and specially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succour all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name, for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to give us grace, so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom, Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbours, and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word and deed against thy divine majesty provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honour and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him, come unto me, all that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. 
So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Here also what St. Paul saith, this is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Here also what St. John saith, if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Amen. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there, by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue, a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Amen. Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. The word said the institution the admission uh, of communion are that this bread and wine would preserve our body and souls to everlasting life. As I receive, we are gathered together spiritually in communion, knowing that the death of Christ, the resurrection, bring us to new life in service of Christ the King. 
body of Christ. Blood of Christ. As our Saviour Christ hath commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Lord and Heavenly Father, <clears throat> we thy humble servants entirely desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy and lively sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. And although we be unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offences, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honour and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Glory be to God on high, and in earth peace, good will towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory, O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty. O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Before the blessing, uh, to say that uh, our worship continues online this morning at 9.30, uh, our bubble worship for children and their households, uh, led by uh, Maureen and myself here, and that's on Zoom. Details are in the email that came out yesterday. At 11 o'clock, uh, our worship together, service of the word for Christ the King, which Jan will lead, I'm preaching uh, and we'll be admitting formally uh, Jenny and Martin as our church wardens for this uh, truncated church wardens year. We'll be doing that at the 11 o'clock service too. The chance to chat afterwards on Zoom as always. And at five o'clock uh, evening prayer uh, on Zoom uh, again and also uh, streamed on Facebook as the 11 o'clock will be uh, as well. 
uh, the 11 o'clock and the 5 o'clock contain a hymn uh, and anthem uh, recorded by the choir also. And as ever, uh, we seek to upload uh, different aspects of our worship onto our YouTube channel as soon as possible so you can uh, see and uh, listen uh, and reflect during the week and share it with friends too. Those of you who have been volunteers over the last few years at the uh, winter shelter run by C4WS uh, should have received an email yesterday uh, with details of how the shelter will operate in a hostel uh, in King's Cross uh, and with an urgent plea to get your availability if you are able to help uh, through uh, by tomorrow please so that rotors can be done. We've been invited to uh, support on Saturdays through to Sunday afternoons. Do please uh, look for that email. If you'd like further details of that, just email into the vestry and we'll be able to let you know as soon as we can. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.